Yes, friends, welcome, welcome. Very happy to be here with you today. And this is the first time I've had the chance to wish you a happy new year. And so do accept from me my prayers and good wishes for your good health and fulfillment and peace and joy and success in everything in this year that's now beginning. Another turn of the planet around the sun, a new beginning, and a reminder that causation works in more than one direction. One direction of causation is the very familiar one. The past leads to the present, and the present leads to the future. And as we are conditioned, so we act, and therefore the world moves in predictable ways. But thankfully, this isn't the only direction of causation. There's another direction whereby the world is recreated anew every day, in fact, every moment. So the creation of the universe is not something that happened a long, long time ago. The creation of the universe continuously unfurls from the absolute and new possibilities continuously emerge. But if we are locked into our conditioning, if we are constrained by what we think we know and what we expect, then we really can never receive the freshness of what is new, the newly possible. And remember that the Absolute, or God, is especially known as the All-Possible. In fact, Murshid said, people call God the Almighty, but I prefer to say the All-Possible. And those possibilities descend always newly upon us, but if we're caught up too much in the past, we won't feel them and know them. So this new year represents an opportunity to turn a new leaf, not to carry on with the burden of that which weighs us down unnecessarily. A sense of irrational shame, bitterness concerning other people or the world itself. We can let go of that burden of anxiousness and distractedness and just be totally present to this moment, this time, this instant. And that's why the Sufi is known as Ibn al-Waqt or Bint al-Waqt, which means the son or daughter of the moment to live truly in this moment that is fresh, that is born anew from the invisible, to watch the invisible become visible every moment and live in that transpiring. So in this spirit, Burshid has given a prayer for the new year, and some of you may have recited it on New Year's Day, but um, since this is our new year together, our first gathering of the new year, I would like to read it out. O thou who abidest in our hearts, most merciful and compassionate God, Lord of heaven and earth, we forgive others their trespasses and ask thy forgiveness of our shortcomings. We begin the new year with pure heart and clear conscience, 
with courage and hope. Help us to fulfill the purpose of our lives under thy divine guidance. Amen. This prayer is actually a meditation. It begins by turning our attention toward the absolute, toward the one being, but not as an external phenomenon, but rather as the innermost secret of our own heart, thou who abidest in our heart, and the being of which is the essence of love, of connectedness, most merciful and compassionate, Lord of heaven and earth, that is to say present, compassionately present in the invisible worlds and in the visible worlds. We forgive others their trespasses. So we begin the new year with forgiveness, which is to say that we choose not to carry with us old grievances. Yes, we might keep with us the lessons that we've learned, but the, the bitterness that comes with with a grievance, with, with holding a grudge. That is a burden that will not help us. So we choose to, to let it go, to forgive, to turn the whole matter over to God. Whatever reckoning there will be, let it be, but let us in ourselves wish well those who have um, acted amiss knowing actually that um, all actions that are harmful first and foremost harm the one that does the deed and to remember that is to be help to be compassionate if someone has done harm really that is a harm they have done to their soul and we can wish them well we can wish them healing so lighten our own burden by practicing forgiveness as far as we can take it we can't force forgiveness upon ourselves and if one feels um, a wound well uh, the, the, the guidance is not to repress the the uh, sting of what one has felt. If one has been stung, there's pain there, let it be. The pain will, in time, heal, just as a wound to the body heals. But we can clear the air, we can free ourselves of the heaviness of recrimination and blame and finger pointing and revisiting the past um, and wishing it had been different. Forgive others their trespasses and ask God's forgiveness of our own shortcomings. How could we possibly ask forgiveness for ourselves if we don't first extend forgiveness to others? So that comes first in the prayer. Forgiveness to others. And then, could we also receive forgiveness? Asking that. And asking forgiveness means, of course, that one recognizes if one has done something that has caused harm, trying to repair the harm as much as one can, seeking to take a turn in one's mind, in one's heart, so that one isn't thinking in the ways that caused those actions, one isn't inclining toward those things, because one sees it came out of an illusion, it came out of a misperception. So resolving to see more clearly and then let the past be in the past. In fact we run the risk of repeating the mistake by carrying that mistake always in our mind. We reiterate it. 
seeing how we took a wrong turn, turning back, and now letting it go. How important that is for the new year. If in the new year we truly mean to, to go forward. And therefore we can, as the prayer says, begin with pure heart and clear conscience. And how um, encouraging and, and um, ennobling it is to proceed with a clear conscience. When one has a, um, a guilty conscience, one is um, fearful, living in fear of being discovered, one is ashamed of oneself, one tries to keep a low profile, one dare not uh, pursue any great goal because one is cowering in the, in the thought of one's limitation. But beginning anew, learning from the past, but letting it go, receiving forgiveness, gives one a great boldness, the chance to take initiative, really lift up one's head. You don't have to live in the shadows of the mistakes of the past. Lift up one's head and with dignity, with optimism, go forward. That's what the prayer is urging. With courage and hope, help us to fulfill the purpose of our lives under thy divine guidance. Each of us is endowed with a life purpose. And when we are happiest, when we're most connected, when we're most alive, it's when we feel that purpose. It doesn't matter if we're rich or poor, it doesn't matter if we have problems or no problems. What gives that feeling of livingness and even of happiness is that you're doing what you're meant to be doing, whether it's visibly or invisibly. It could be what you're meant to be doing inwardly, but you're doing that which is your purpose. And that sense of being plugged in, that sense of alignment, uh, that gives great fulfillment. And that's what we're looking for. So may this be a year in which, more importantly than anything else, our purpose becomes clearer and clearer. And if we're looking for our purpose, if we're if we're seeking it, it will find us. That intention is crucial. And you feel it because you have a, a warming feeling in the heart. You know, there's a game that little children play where one child is blindfolded and the other children, um, the, the blindfolded child has to find some, the other one. And they say, warmer, warmer, when they come closer. When they are further, they say, colder, colder. You know the game. Well, that's the feeling of finding one's purpose. Feel that warmth in the heart. That sense of, of getting closer to what you're looking for. You can't see it with your eyes, but you hear a voice, warmer, warmer. You listen for that voice. That's the voice of purpose. So may this be a year in which that warming of the heart, that sense of coming closer to that which we are seeking, step by step, is possible because of this attention, because of our intention to lay down the burdens of the past, to be totally present to this moment, and with optimism and hope and a clear conscience, go forward step by step. O Thou who abidest in our hearts, most merciful and compassionate God, Lord of heaven and earth, we forgive others their trespasses and ask Thy forgiveness of our shortcomings. We begin the year with pure heart and clear conscience, with courage and hope. Help us to fulfill the purpose of our lives under Thy divine guidance. Amen.